Big updates from Fabrizio Romano in regards to West Ham United's pursuit of Armando Broja. Um, it's been going on for the last couple of hours, but this is the latest from Fabrizio Romano. To read his tweet word for word, it said, West Ham and Chelsea are still in talks on final details of the deal, like potential buyback clauses or not add-ons. But the agreement of Armando Broja is really close and it will be a permanent deal. Broja now pushing that's why he's flying back to England. And earlier on, about an hour or two before that tweet, Fabrizio Romano updated us saying that West Ham United have agreed personal terms with Armando Broja already. So it looks like it's gone from that into that West Ham and Chelsea and now into the finer points of the deal, which would just suggest, Gonzo, that the initial fee is already agreed. It's now just about the, like, like, like Fabrizio Romano said, the final deal of the contract. But it's certainly getting a lot, lot closer. Uh, this is really exciting. I mean, I well, speak for myself, maybe. Hopefully everybody else is excited as well. You know, I, I like this player. I really do. And I just, you know, think that so, somebody that massively suits our system. Um, well, I think we've been, we've been signing players in this window anyway. And I think, obviously, we've had a good couple of seasons. But Moyes still takes a lot of stick. You know, you'll see always see comments about where's this Red Bull model. You see the comments all the time. Um and maybe he stitched himself up with his own comments. You might, well, if I reckon, if you ask him privately, would you, if you go back, not make the Red Bull comment? He might think, yeah, maybe he's, maybe he's oblivious to it. Maybe he doesn't know the criticism he gets. But this is very much falls into that category, and, and you can see, you can see with the signing how much he he values experience. So the central defender's got lots of games under his belt. He's an international. He's in his mid twenties. He's learned his trade. The central midfielder comes in. No. Not quite so much. He's played 100-odd games. I'm talking about Flynn Downs here, but he's still young. You know, um, you look at Anana, for instance, uh, 20 years of age, but he's got some professional uh, games under his belt. Then you look at Breuer, 20 years of age. D you know, this is a player with his career ahead of him. And as much as it's disappointing to lose a player like Sonny Perkins, and I, I would rather that not happen, we are bringing in somebody who's far further down the line than him, but he's still a very, very young player and, and has got enough experience in the first league that Moyes will think, OK, I can utilise him, but I can polish him up and make him the player I want him to be. But I, this is why I feel that the um, the longer I've thought about it, why I feel the permanent deal is important. Moyes has to feel invested in it. Moyes has to feel that actually if I nurture this player and if I make him better, I'm going to I'm gonna basically reap the rewards of it. So, um but it's exciting to hear that he's flying over. Yeah, I um I'm really excited about it for two reasons. The first of all is the obvious one, which is the player. I was sort of wondering, I was looking forward to seeing Broha a year ago because Chelsea were reluctant to let him leave Chelsea until they signed Romelu Lukaku. Then their stance changed a little bit. Some at Southampton, oh bloody hell, this guy looks good. Obviously, he was 19 years old at the point. But he, he had everything. He had the physique, he had the pace. He was just really, it caused us all sorts of bother. Every game we played Southampton this season, Bruja, often off the bench, came on. And I remember at the St Mary's, which seems quite early on in the season, it was nil nil, a very boring game. Bruja came on, absolutely done Ogbonna, and then walloped the shot off the post. And you stood there thinking, bloody hell, that guy is good. You know, I've been looking forward to seeing him part from today's game. And this is the one you're thinking, hello. And I know. A lot of our subscribers aren't too keen on him. I think he's a bit Marmite almost. A lot of people are loving the fact that Broha could come to West Ham. I think a lot of people are a bit uh, quite against it. So hang on a minute. I don't think he's all that yet. But I think that's the point. We, If he is all that, we can't afford him. We won't get him. He'd be Chelsea striker. So we're buying a 20-year-old who can be moulded by David Royce into the striker that he wants and that he needs at West Ham United. And I think he's... A terrific talent already. Is he ready to lead the line for a European club in the Premier League? Probably not. But that's not what we're asking here. We're asking him to almost be an alternative to Mikel Antonio for a season or two and then be the man when he's just 22, then be the man to lead the line at West Ham. Is he good enough to be that? Oh, absolutely. I'd, I'd argue that he's further ahead than that. So this is a really exciting player to purchase. You can see how he'd fit David Moyes' West Ham. You can see how David Moyes' West Ham would fit Amanda Broja as well. Yeah, There's absolutely. one thing I think in particular he needs to improve on quite a bit if he's going to be a success, but we'll get on to that. But the second part of the deal that excites me 
is this is David Moyes' supposed number one target and we're going after him because the last three, four transfer windows maybe, Moyes has had his number one targets and we've just not got them. And it's gone, oh, well, we'll move on to the next window. By the time the next window comes around, Moyes has got a new number one target. So it was an Ezri, then it wasn't an Ezri, then it was Darwin Nunes, then it wasn't Darwin Nunes. And that makes sense because you've now got another six months worth of data and views and other clubs now want him and stuff. I get it. But you miss out. And I think Armando Broja was a bit like that for me. If we don't get him now, we possibly might not get him. But to go after and get Moises, who we believe, or we're told, is his number one target for centre-back, we've got him. He's going after his number one target for striker, we're getting him. I think that's substantial, actually. I think it's really, really important, especially after January's window where we went after this player, that player, and this player and got nowhere. We're now making serious moves in the summer transfer window. We're not even finished yet, but this was a fantastic signing. Yeah, it also shows that you can't keep a Chelsea um, deal quiet. Flynn Downs just signed, didn't he? No one knew, no talk or anything. Both now with Zuma um, and with Breuer. We've heard all about it so clearly. So I think in terms of West Ham, I think perhaps we've got no leaks. I think sometimes the leaks come from the other. I reckon they're like a colander, aren't they, basically, Chelsea? Um, I think this is a really good signing, Joe. And also you've got to look at, not just a player age in terms of the profile, but look at his profile in terms of he's a homegrown player. I mean, he's um, he's Albanian international, but he was born in Slough, raised in Slough. You know, it's uh, it's his. You know, he's born and raised in this country. He's just chosen to represent the country of his of his parents' birth, where his parents came from. Uh, but he's a homegrown player, so there's no settling down needed. Uh, he ticks the box of the homegrown quota as well, which is another thing. And certainly, I, I felt was with Mark Noble retiring was a little bit of a concern for us as well. So we're getting that done. But I, but also, I, by no means do I think this is. We're just doing it because he's homegrown. I do believe that this is David Moyes' first target. And we've been linked with so many strikers. And sometimes, like the lad Armstrong, for instance, who went on to sign for Southampton, I believe. And, you know, when I looked at him when he was in the championship, I thought, there's just no way. There's just... Moyes doesn't play these type of strikers. You know, he doesn't suit his style. But the moment you saw this this guy play, you're, uh, yeah, he would actually be very, very good in our system. I do think this is something that we're doing now. We're bringing in players who suit the system more. Um, you know, we just done a video five minutes ago and we were discussing um, the new centre-back that's coming and he very much suits our system, suits the way we want to play. We spoke about the long ball that Aguirre played against um, Reading. Um, long ball out to Jared Bowen. That's something we're going to utilise and when we have a striker, he's going to have to be physical. He's going to have to pull out wide. Um, and really, really importantly, and I feel this is pivotal and crucial for the team, is he's, he's athletic. He's fast. And we need that. We desperately need that. We need more. Royer won't just do it. I think we need a, a, a bit more pace in other areas of the team. But um, if we could get this guy in and we could get Anana as well, then you're bringing a lot of pace centrally. We still need some out wide, but I... I I'm incredibly excited by this this prospect. We'll deal with the um, structure of, um, of the deal itself in just a minute. The one thing I'm a little bit weary about is his, despite him being quite a big physical player and he's very strong, it, in the air, he's not that dominant. That's the one thing he needs to sort of improve a little bit. But I don't think Southampton's the best club to gauge him at because Southampton don't really play crosses and stuff like that. They, they tend to keep it on the deck a little bit more than what West Ham do. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on with that aspect of, of his game. And we are going to be putting the crosses in. Last season, we putting more crosses than... Sorry, we put putting less crosses last season than the season prior when we finished six. So there has been a slight shift of the way that West Ham play. I would argue not necessarily because of the, we chose to, but the way the opponent's set up against us now, because there's been a switch in increase in average possession as well. So that'd be the one thing I think I need to see a little bit of improvement in, but he's got everything else as far as I'm concerned. Now, in regards to the structure, you did your video yesterday, which, by the way, you said... Fifty million pound striker. How much goals would you want to see him score in Premier League for? You said twenty. Twenty? Nah. If he scores twenty goals in Premier League, he's worth hundred million. There's only two players who scored twenty goals in Premier League last season: Son and Salah. The season before that, Kane and Salah. Twenty goals a season striker is not a thing anymore, really. But I tell you what, 
I think he'll score 20. No, but I think if he can get 10 in his first season, yeah. I think that's a good... Let, 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 me just, let me just stop you there, because I know what the comment section is like. I didn't say he'd score 20 goals. I know you're not saying. I no, said no, it. you're I, saying... I, if... I, 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 was, I was saying at the moment, if they were doing a swap with Declan Rice, Chelsea at the moment would value him at sort of 25 to 30, because this was while it was going to be a low. And I said next season, for them to incrementally the price to rise, he'd have to score a lot of goals. I'm not predicting he'll score 20 goals next season, just so we're clear on that. Um, in terms of the structure, so it's not a low move. That's good news. I didn't want to. I, I know you weren't keen on it, but you were sort of throwing out all the options really yeah, in yesterday's video. Know. I wasn't keen on it unless I had an option to buy because I don't want the Jesse Lingard heartache all over again kind of thing. And yeah. if he would came to West Ham as a success, every other club would be interested as well. You'd have, you know, Chelsea would say, "Thanks for that. I'm now got, we've now got a Premier League striker on our hands. So you will keep him." But it looks like it's a permanent deal. This is really pleasing. But as Fabrizio Romano says, we're now to talking about potential add-ons, potential buyback clauses. Where do you stand on those two in particular? Because I think they're the big ones. So the buyback clause that Chelsea could buy him back at a set price, usually within a certain period of time. Then obviously there's a second one, which is if we do flog him, they get X percentage of the transfer fee. I think you could have no complaints about that. I think it's possibly quite good for us to be able to steer Chelsea away from the loan option. So I think that that will have taken some form of negotiation, some good negotiation. So to get from that, you're then going to have to make some concessions. I think the one about if we sell him in the future, we get whatever 10% of the profit or whatever the case may be. I think there's nothing you could do about that. I think I would expect West Ham to do that, by the way. You know, um, I was disappointed when West Ham haven't done that, for instance. You know, the Haller deal would be a really good example. Um, signing for 45, selling for 20. Well, that's bad anyway, but you say to Ajax, look, if you sell it, you know, all right, look, you've taken, you pulled our trousers down here. If you sell him on again, give us a bit of the money then, or whatever the case may be. I don't think we've been very good at it in the past. So I don't blame Chelsea for doing that at all. The buyback option, um, I don't like it, but it is also, what's the midfield? His name Romelu. Place for uh, Southampton. Romeo. Yeah, say so, right, Romeo. They had it with him. He was at Chelsea uh, and they had it with him and it was never activated. Um, also, that's all very well and good, but the players' wishes come into this as well. And it's something that I said to Valise, let, let's let's look at the, what the player wants here. The player may want to move from, from West Ham. And it's all very well if Breuer does well, Chelsea coming in and saying, oh, we'll buy you back. But maybe, just maybe, Breuer wouldn't want to go back. Maybe he might turn around and say, well, actually, I'm, I'm quite enjoying it here. And it's for, it's for us to make that the case, by the way. I've got European football. I'm playing first-team football. I don't want to come back and, and do what happened when Tammy Abraham came back off loan and stuff like that. I want to... I'm happy being the main man. I think once we've moved it on from a loan deal, we've almost got to except Chelsea, not exactly the terms, but except what Chelsea would want to do, then negotiate the terms that are best for ourselves. What I don't want is that we buy him for 30 million and the buyback is 30 million because where's the advantage to us to improve him? So um, we talk about the 50 million, you know, maybe that is a, a smart thing to do, you know, something like that where they can buy him back for 50 or something like that. Cause at least then, if it does work out, they do buy him. He'll have played well. They'll buy him back. We'll have had a good couple of seasons out of him or whatever. And then we've got 50 million to go to whatever kitty we have then. So it's not ideal, Gio, but we need to get... I feel we need to get a deal over the line for a striker. We tried for too long. So whatever it takes, make the negotiations. I'll tell you what, it'll be... This is Moyes and Newman now. Um, let's. I think it'd be really good for them to complete... Let's forget Ariola as a deal. It'd be really good for them to get their third deal on what's a tricky one to negotiate. Yeah, I completely agree. I think there's got to be compromises somewhere in order to steer away from the loan deal. And I think this is the two obvious players here. One is the sell-on clause, which well will happen in future. Even if he joins, he's not going to be here till the end of his career. He's going to go somewhere at some point. But I guess it's keeping it as low as possible. But the second one, which is probably one that Chelsea would prefer, I'd imagine, which is the buyback clause, in case they've got it wrong, essentially, or, or you could argue, in case Chelsea have got it right, because they're saying, well, we think he's going to be, they're almost indirectly saying, we think this guy's going to make it in the Premier League here, so we'd rather you loan him. Well, if he does, you can buy him back, kind of thing. But Chelsea are only interested in buying top, top players. So 
well, it would have to be one of the best in European football sure. in order for Chelsea to come knocking. Also, the clause, the price would have to be high. You say 50 million, I'd like it to be a bit higher than that, in yeah. all honesty. And then, like you said, in order for him to be worth that much, he's played bloody damn well. He's the main man at West Ham. To be worth 60 million, he's the main striker. He's scoring goals week in, week out. And then, like you said, Chelsea have then got to lure him back and say, come back to Stamford Bridge. You might say, well, hang on a minute, we're playing, I'm playing European League football here. Um, I'm the main man from my country as well. I've got it all, really. I'm, I'm OK with this, thank you very much. I don't need to go. Second of all, there's usually, well, it's thirdly now, there's usually a date on these clauses which can be activated. For example, Tammy Abraham. Chelsea can buy back Tammy Abraham next summer. They can't buy him this summer. They can only buy him next summer. It's only active for one summer. And it's 80 million euros. So next summer, Chelsea need a top, top striker. Don't worry about them activating Amanda Broja's clause. They'd be going back to Roma and saying, we're having Tammy Abraham back. Thank you very much. They've Good still point. got Romelu Lukaku. He's only out on loan now into Milan at the minute. So next summer, Lukaku's back as well. So I'm quite relaxed about it, providing... I mean, it depends on the fee, really. There's almost a second negotiation to be done between clubs now. But I reckon it's got to be about 60 million. And we're paying 30 million for him. And then it's... If they do buy him back, it means we've essentially got paid 30 million to have him on loan for three seasons and he's played really well in the meantime. So it wouldn't be ideal, but if that's what it takes to get this deal done, then I think it's what you've got to do. I'd rather buy a top striker in with a clause than have no top striker because you just don't agree with the clauses kind of thing. Um so, so they, they have it. The good thing is, though, obviously, they then go ahead and sign Deck and Rice hypothetically next summer because, well, you can stick a sell on clause on that as Absolutely. well. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, um, we'll, yeah, we'll have 10% we'll have to buy, of any we'll have to buy on one, and you can, you can loan him if you want. We'll, we'll, buy, we'll buy him back in 2030 for 10 million, please. Yeah. He'll, be, he'll be 32 then. We'll, we'll have him we'll yeah. have him back uh, for cheaper. He can finish his career with us. Uh, so, yes, Gonzo, to summarize, Amanda Broha is very, very close. How come? Give me a percentage. How confident are you by the end of this week, Amanda Broha will be a West Ham United player? Well, it's only a very hot Monday, uh, so it's early in the week. I'm 80% confident. I was going to say 80%. I feel good. I feel yeah, good. I yeah. and, and hot. Everything, 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 the fact that, you know, we've been at him for a while, our interest in him, the negotiations, the fact that it's come from Fabrizio Romano, he's flown back to America to secure a deal somewhere. Sounds like Broha wants... I mean, it sounded like he wanted a couple of weeks ago anyway. I want to stay in London. Basically, he's saying, oh, well, only West Ham for me, please. Thank you very much. I don't want to go to Newcastle, Everton. I'd like to go to that club. So, um, yeah. So, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have a new signing this week and it will be Amanda Broha. Um, the, the deal is expected to be 30 million, 25 million up front, 5 million of add-ons. And it looks like they're negotiating clauses at the minute, the final points of the deal. But for myself and Gonzo, we'll leave it there. If you've enjoyed this video, drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel. Myself, oh, myself and Gonzo are doing another video today uh, for the forum channel. Uh, what were we discussing, Mikel Antonio? Well, well, well it, was, it was part of my, yeah, it was it was how that might impact the, um, not the relationship, but Mikel Antonio's place. And so, basically, I really want to discuss how we're going to see Mikel Antonio, bearing in mind our lack of pace on the wing. Are we going to see Antonio used on the wing wall? And um, to make it easier for you, the video is on your screen in about five seconds. We'll catch you in a bit.